I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice little antique spinet desk. It's called a spinet because it resembles a musical instrument called a spinet that's in the harpsichord family. This piece is all solid mahogany. It opens like this to reveal the desk interior with a pull-out writing surface. Cubby holes and drawers. It also has a bottom drawer, a pencil drawer. Uh, I think this desk was made around 1900. It resembles a lot of furniture I've worked on made by the Payne Furniture Company in Boston uh, from that time period. All of it was solid mahogany, reproductions, and the dovetails are machine cut dovetails that uh, make me think this piece is uh, after 1900, but uh, pretty early in the game. So what's happened is the finish was already somewhat tired, but then it got water damage all along the top here, dripping down the sides and the interior. And so the main thing is to get rid of the water damage and sort of try to keep a minimal restoration. One thing I didn't mention in the uh, introduction was that these legs are loose. And I, I thought maybe they were screwed in there, but they don't tighten. They just spin and spin. Actually, this one just tightened a little bit. I want to take this, uh, these, the lids off anyway, so I can flip this over and see what's going on with the legs. Oh good, there's just a big old uh, nut in there. So I can take these off, and when I reinstall them, I'll put a lock washer in there. I'm just gonna leave the legs on here for now. I'll, uh, I'll take them off uh, when I need to. I know I had to have a reason to leave these legs on. Just, uh, I wanna experiment a little bit on the back of it. The back here is a great place to experiment a bit and figure out exactly what we're going to do. I'll put some alcohol on a rag here and pat it. it. Certainly looks better wet, but the marks aren't really going away. And as it dries, they really they really come back. One thing I noticed about this piece when I first saw it is that it seems to have very little finish on it. And yet originally, I'm sure it had a much uh, higher build, higher gloss finish, either varnish or even nitrocellulose lacquer, um, which makes me think it's been, uh, was refinished in the past. I feel like this allows me to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna try some 4 aught steel wool and alcohol and see if that does a better job. I think I can see the marks actually going away. Yeah, as it dries, I can see the marks have gone away. Now, it's also a lot lighter than the surrounding surface. I think I might do a, a quick tape off of the sides and then uh, redo this back completely. See how I like it. In other words, I'm going to clean it down with alcohol, uh, restain it, and varnish it.
Okay, I'll uh, let this dry. Being alcohol, it uh, won't take, take long at all. I'll give it an hour to make sure it's completely dry. I mixed up some uh, dye stain I'm going to use. I used uh, these products from Mohawk, one part brown mahogany, one part perfect brown, and two parts of the retarder made for the stain. All right, it looks good. Now I'll uh, apply a coat of varnish. One of the many things I like about this Waterlocks tongue oil varnish is that they've been uh, making it this way since 1910, which is about the same age as this piece of furniture. Well, it looks great. I've uh, talked to the customer, explained to them what I'm doing, and they've given the approval, so I think I can go ahead and do the rest of the desk. As the back of the desk dried, you can really see how well it uh, matches the rest of the desk, color and everything, although I'm going to put more finish on it. But I can confidently uh, go ahead now. I'm going to scrub down the entire desk with alcohol. Note how I'm scrubbing with the grain, even though I'm using uh, the finest steel wool, 4-0 steel wool. I'm not going to sand the wood, so I don't want to risk any uh, cross-grain scratches or anything. So I'll just keep scrubbing with the grain. Note how the alcohol, what it looks like laying on the surface like that, it almost looks like a possible uh, contamination problem. We'll be looking for it. I still got some marks down at this end. Uh, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to treat it with uh, oxalic acid.
scratches and gouges like these, I'm going to leave. I think I will take the legs off uh, for this operation. So off camera, I drilled out these 2x4s to accommodate the legs. So I go over the desk or object uh, once with the solvent, which is alcohol, and as you can see it gets pretty dirty. So I pour that dirty alcohol. This is a cone filter and a paper towel. And I'll use what filters out later. And then I'll go over everything again with clean thinner, a clean piece of steel wool, and a clean rag. And then that solvent from the second wash and the filtered solvent become the, uh, the solvent I'll use for the first wash here. The two pieces with the worst damage are the lid and the false drawer front. Um, everything else seems to come out with the alcohol wash. So I'm going to try some oxalic acid on these. Oxalic acid comes in a powder form. You mix it with hot water. I'm going to take about uh, 12, 16 ounces of hot water, so it's 350 milliliters or more. Our tap water is very hot, about 130 degrees or more, about 55 degrees Celsius. To measure the oxalic, I'm just using a one ounce measuring cup here, so you metric people are on your own in that regard. But it's not, um, it's not scientific. I don't really measure stuff out very carefully. Usually I'll sand the surface a little bit to prep it for the oxalic, but I'm gonna, I don't want to sand this piece of furniture, so I'm going to try it without sanding. Always do the entire surface, not, don't try to do just the one spot where the damage is. I think you can maybe see that the uh, surface is resisting the water a little bit. Uh, so I will uh, scrub the oxalic with a gray scotch bite pad.
I think I can see some improvement already uh, as I scrub, but uh, we'll just leave it on, let it do its work. Sometimes you'll see a stain come out right away, but you really have to wait uh, until it dries completely. And I'll keep it wet for a while too. Yesterday evening I came in and looked at these, they had dried. I could still see some of the marks, it had done a good job, but uh, off camera, uh, because it was just the evening, I mixed up an entirely new batch of exolic, the, the same way I did before, and brushed on another coat. Uh, it's hard to tell yet, but it looks like it did a good job. When using oxalic acid, you must rinse off this residue thoroughly. Uh, if the object is not small enough to do in the sink, take it outside in the driveway. You've seen me do that in my videos with a garden hose. If you don't rinse the oxalic off well enough, when you start to sand, you will become immediately aware of it. The water marks are almost gone, 95%, 99%. This is the worst area here where this red marks are. This darker area here is simply where the wood wasn't uh, faded out by the sun with that false drawer front folded over. This area on the false drawer front is also largely gone. I see a little bit right there, but uh, and I think I can faintly see some rings, but it's largely gone. So now we'll just uh, let these dry, at least overnight. All right, let's see what we got. You know, I'm not seeing any of the water marks. Here are those red marks. They're faded quite a bit. And this was an area that had a lot of damage. This was the worst of the damage. It looks good. I see a line here, and I see a still shadow of a ring, but overall not bad at all. Now my goal going into this was not to sand this piece of furniture, but I am just with the 220, lightly, by hand, just in these areas like where that line is, where that ring is, sometimes it just takes that. And uh, the, the water didn't raise the grain a lot, but they're not exactly smooth, so uh, just a real light one. That's it, just the light going over. There's still some shadows of water damage, uh, scratches. I'm making no effort to get out that kind of damage. It'll look fine under the finish. You do have to check these edges. Sometimes you have to go at these edges a little bit more if there's drip marks. So you gotta check all your edges. Well, those red marks can stay. I'm going to stain these with the same dye stain I used on the back. These are those red marks.
All the watermarks appear to be gone, at least so far. Typically I like to leave uh, some of these worn spots, but there's something about these legs I, I really don't like. I tried some of the dye stain. Maybe helped a little, but not much. But I uh, found that this uh, medium oak marker seems to do a pretty good job. The good news is I only have to do this 32 times, which I won't show on camera. Well, that only took about 15 minutes. I should have recorded it. Okay, the stains dried for a few hours. Uh, I'm ready to put on the first coat of varnish. Uh, you know, uh, long-time viewers of my videos are going to be wondering why I'm finishing that this here and not in my little finishing corner down here. And that's because these little chicks have taken over the corner. Uh, our barn's being renovated, so uh, they're here for now for a few more weeks. This is the end with some of the worst damage. This was the area with the worst damage. Here are those red marks. You can see this area trying to fish eye. I think I saw that when it was wet with the, the alcohol also. 
What I'll do is finish putting my coat on the top. So I've had good luck in the past. This is the area that was trying to fish eye. It's already better, but I just keep tipping it off. There's a very slow drying finish, but I'll stand here for a while if I need to. I keep tipping it off until it, it dries without that uh, fish eye type behavior. This is the area of the top that was water damaged. I think I should touch up these little scratched areas. This is the same stain I used on the pieces that I needed to stain. I'll let this dry while I uh, coat the drawer fronts. I like to finish on the knob, I'll leave that alone. This is the area where all those little chips were I touched up, like right there, there. Okay, uh, everything will dry overnight. Wow, everything seems nice and dry. This is great. This piece doesn't look dry yet, I'll stick it in a warm spot. But this is all dry enough, I'm going to sand everything with 320 free cut paper and uh, put another coat on. You can tell by the way the sandpaper uh, gums up a little bit. It's not as dry as it felt to the touch, but that's okay. I'm just going over it quickly. Uh, the next coat should dry a lot better and sand better. After I sand just a little bit, I also go over it with the gray pad. Just once again, just quickly take the little nibs and stuff off. On objects like these legs, I just use a gray pad. A sandpaper would have a tendency to cut through all those edges I touched up. The, uh, the lid and the false drawer front uh, don't get sanded because I've got to coat the other side here. These are double-sided pieces.
legs always had uh, more finish on them than the uh, carcass. So uh, I'm going to go straight to the satin. It's the same finish, the water locks, tongue oil varnish, but the satin version. Before the final coat, I like to wipe these things off with this uh, Mohawk wax wash remover. It, uh, besides removing the obviously surface dust, it helps remove uh, contaminants and just seems to prepare the surface for a really nice final coat. Great, uh, everything's dried fine. It's not ready for the final coat. I'm going to put another coat on. These two pieces especially need more finish on both sides. The legs look great. I'm calling these done. Uh, these lids are what had the most damage on them, so they got cleaned down the most and they're really soaking up the finish. They're going to need uh, at least four coats. One of the nice things about the Waterlocks tongue oil varnish is that it doesn't require sanding between coats. So the first coats on these objects soaked in so much and they're not rough or anything. I'm just going to apply another coat. In fact, I'm going to give another coat to everything and uh, I'll sand before the final coat. With each coat, this being the third, the wood just keeps looking better and better. The depth is uh, really nice. These drawers, uh, like the legs, had finish on them. I've given them one coat. I think I can go to the final coat now. Just a quick once over with the Scotch Brite pad. A quick wipe off with the wash wax remover. Okay, that was uh, quick today, so let them dry overnight. Well, 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 this, uh, the case here has dried fine. Now, two days have gone by. I didn't work on this yesterday. These parts of the lid are still tacky. It's been very humid lately. I'm going away for a week. I'm going up to camp, and what I'm going to do is flip these over on points and put a coat on the other side and let them dry for a week. The drawers are fine, so I can put these with the legs. One of the things I like about the water locks is its slow drying time because it allows it to really flow out beautifully. But when you're refinishing with it, you can run into these drying problems. And the best thing to do, I can turn up the heat. Uh, I'm going to let these dry for a week. I'm going to flip them over and do the other side. And once they do dry, subsequent coats have much less of a problem. The flip sides, which I coated uh, maybe three days ago, they've dried up just fine. But I don't need to sand them, I'm just going to put another coat on them. Because I know there are drying issues, I'm going to try to put on as thin a coat as possible. These are going to have uh, plenty of time to dry. So these have had over a week to dry. Uh, 
the desk, the body of the desk is fine. These lids still have uh, some areas that haven't dried completely. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm going to coat them anyway, and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do, though. These areas that are still glossy are a little bit tacky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pad these areas uh, just slightly with a little bit of paint thinner. Okay, I'm going to let this uh, flash off. While that's going on, I'm going to sand and get the case ready for a final coat. Now the case is dried really well. I'm going to go over it with some 320 gold sandpaper, just kind of lightly, and then go at it a little more aggressively with a gray scotch bright pad. I'm getting a little buildup on the paper, but it's dry. Comes right off. So I'm going to put a coat of satin on the case. I'm hoping this is the final coat. And on these two lids though, I'll go back to the uh, sealer finish. They're not ready for the satin yet at all. All right, I realize I don't need to turn on the heat tonight. I'm going to turn on a dehumidifier and uh, well, we'll see tomorrow how it goes. Wow, the desk uh, caucus here has dried beautifully. The coat went down a lot better on these, but they're, they're still tacky. I'd been thinking uh, about what I would do if they were still tacky, and I'm going to clean out the shelf under my bench, set them up on that shelf, and point a heater under there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to enclose this or anything, but it's nice and warm in here, because good airflow is just as important to the drying process. So, we'll do this to set until later today and see how it's going. Wow, these are, uh, they've really dried up well. There's a little, just a little bit of tackiness I feel here. Slight, so uh, I didn't run the heater all night. I turned it off at the end of the day, but I did run the dehumidifier all night. I'm just going to let these sit for another day. It's much drier now, and uh, I've got another part I can work on. This is the writing surface of the desk, you know, the part that pulls out. It had a lot more finish on it than any of the other parts, and, but I sanded it, you may remember previously, and gave it one coat of the sealer. 
I'm going to sand it again and go ahead and put uh, what I hope is the final coat on it. Wow, uh, good news. They feel completely dry. This is really good news. Of course, remember, it's, only, it's been less than 48 hours since I put that coat down. So it was a little worrisome, but it's good. I'm still going to let this dry further because I can today uh, flip it over on points and get a coat on the other side. This coat on the writing surface went down uh, went down really well. Uh, I can set this aside, let it cure for a while before I rub it out. Now this side, which has had quite a few days, I'm a little bit unsure how long to dry, but it's nice and dry and it's not clogging up the sandpaper at all. It's nice and powdery. I like that. So the thing is, you got to let this stuff dry. I feel like this could be the final coat on this side, so I'm going to go with the satin. Now we'll just let these dry. Today's a great day, low humidity. Uh, low dew points. Uh, tomorrow and Saturday they are predicting uh, temperatures up in very high humidity. And it does happen here in Maine, it's unusual, but uh, we'll just see what happens. Time is on our side. Alright, these have dried overnight. They dried great. I kept the dehumidifier on, uh, but they do need another coat. Same routine, 320 free cut gold paper and a gray pad.
And as you can see, I've uh, elevated these on the points uh, to get better airflow under the bottoms. I still want these, uh, the bottom of these pieces to continue to dry. So I've had a couple days for this to dry, ended up only having one day of high humidity. So these surfaces are ready to rub out, and now I can get back to this side. Okay, I've let these dry for two days and they have dried completely, bone dry, and I'm so glad about that. So they're still starved for finish, uh, I'm going to go, the next coat I'm going to put satin on because it might be the last coat. So I'm going to do just what I did before, 320 gold, gray scotch bright pad, and then a coat of varnish. Wow, it's just been overnight, but these have dried really well. They're great. I'm going to give these a, another day before I rub them out, but I can start uh, on the desk body now. Before the rub out, I'm going to go over the tops uh, kind of quickly with 500 gold paper. And then dry 4 aught steel wool. And then I'll use steel wool and the uh, orange oil beeswax polish. You can see what it looks like after that quick sanding. It's, it's uneven. There's shiny spots, the low spots. And so with the steel wool, uh, you keep going until those shiny spots disappear. And then the finish takes on a, a really nice uh, glow. Using a block with the steel wool uh, can really help with the edges. All right, it's all nice and even now. It looks good. Uh, I'm going to go over it with uh, another piece of Clorox steel wool and the uh, orange oil beeswax polish. And I'll go over the sides of the cabinet and everything just with the steel wool and polish. I don't need to do the sanding. and. Uh, and dry routine. Now for the sides and, and all else besides the top, I'll just use the steel wool and the polish. I think, I'll, uh, I think I'll attach the legs and then do those with the uh, steel wool and polish. Well, these legs are really fun. You know, you've got a bolt here coming out of the leg. Now I've got 
a flat washer, a lock washer that I'm adding, and the nut. But I've got to reach in there. In there, you uh, you can't see what you're doing. You got to reach in there and put each piece on. Anybody who's uh, worked on automobiles knows exactly what this is like. Uh, not too bad. So there you have it. A beautiful uh, spinet desk from the early 20th century. It had a lot of really bad water damage in this area here. So much so that I thought it was necessary to strip the old finish, which wasn't much, and I don't think it was the original finish, and uh, put on a much more durable varnish finish that's appropriate to the age of this piece. Uh, it's important because this desk is in daily use by a student, and this desk belonged to her great-grandmother. I think it looks pretty good. I've got about 20 hours in this job, and these are the tools and materials I used. 